Good morning and welcome to St. George's United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Blair and I am so appreciative that you're taking time out of your day to stop in and to watch our uh, little service that we have here on Sundays. Then I just want to um, also to let you know that today is a special Sunday. Today is All Saint Sunday. You may be thinking, what is All Saint Sunday? Well, if you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you my friends are a saint and you may be thinking i'm not a saint i'm an ain't i don't know if you remember back in the day when the saints football team was so bad fans would wear paper bags over their heads and instead of saying saints it said ain't well you may be thinking that you have nothing special about you to make you a saint but i am here to tell you i disagree with that thinking because god has made you in his image and if like i said if you believe in lord you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you are eventually a saint. And so, yeah, because that's the beautiful thing is that we are all broken people and that God has uh, brought us redemption through Jesus. And so many, 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 many years ago in England, there's a group of bishops that were sitting around and thought that there were too many good people to honor and to uh, place uh, a time of remembrance of their life and what they have done in their life. And so these bishops uh, got together and designated that one day a year should be set aside to celebrate the saints, to celebrate these great people. And so the date they picked was November the 1st. And today is November the 1st. And Usually we have what's called All Saints Sunday, which is the closest Sunday to uh, in November, the first Sunday in November, depending on how November 1st falls. And this year it falls on a Sunday. So how wonderful is that? And we're going to be looking at, um, looking at and remembering some of our saints that we have lost in the church this year. And, and the thing that I love the most is, um, in my time here at St. George's over the last year and a half or so, I've made myself available to the local uh, funeral home. And in 2020, I have done almost 20 funerals. And out of those 20, majority of them are, um, a majority of them are people from the community that I don't know. And it's been great to get to know people and get to know their story. And one thing that I learned through this is the only way I can preach someone's funeral I don't know is to hear about how they live their lives from others. And that's the thing is I cannot preach a funeral. Only the person that has passed away can give me the material to bring forth about their life, their legacy, and, and uh, what stands out in the scriptures. So uh, so with that, uh, at, later on, we're going to have a time of remembering the saints and talking about you and I as saints and what that means for the church. And also today we're going to be celebrating Holy Communion at the end of the service. So if you remembered, great. If you didn't, go grab yourself uh, something, some bread and some grape juice or some bread and something else. Uh, I remember I was on a retreat week, weekend one day and the pastor, we were talking about communion and the pastor said, sometimes if you get in a pinch, just so you have some Lay's and some Code Red, it, you know, it will do. The Lord can bless whatever, but uh, go grab that as we get ready to go further into our time together. So with that, would you please pray with me? Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this day and we praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labor. Lord, we praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you. We especially praise you for Mr. Charles, Miss Ruth, Miss Mary, and Miss Dolores from our congregation that has passed away whom you have graciously received into your presence. To all these people here and you at home, as we reflect on those friends and family that we have lost this past year, Lord, we ask that you grant us peace, 
let your protruding light shine upon them and help us to, to believe where we have not seen that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us to the last with them into the joy of your home, not made with hands, but eternally in heaven. And we pray all this in your son's name, Lord. And Lord, also we pause and we, we thank you for the work that you're doing in our lives, that each day we wake up and we're provided a new mercy. Each day we wake up and we get to start afresh and anew and to show your love as simple as giving words of encouragement as dear, dear, it's okay, or dear, dear, don't cry. And Lord, I pray that as we show your love in unique ways, that you help us to uh, connect those people closer to you. And Lord, we lift up those in our uh, congregation that are facing different struggles, trials, illnesses. Lord, we lift them up to you. And Lord, we lift up those that are um, in a state of grief today and, and, and when we miss those that we love. Help us to realize that you are carrying us along. And Lord, we uh, especially lift up uh, those that are stricken by the area of the um, wildfires, those that have been hit with the hurricane, and those that have sustained damage in our area from the tropical storm. Lord, please uh, grant them the things that they need. And we pray all this in your Son's blessed and holy name. Amen. Amen and Amen. So, this morning our Bible reading comes from John chapter 11, verse 32 through 34. And I thought this was fitting for All Saints Day. And it is the story of Lazarus. And um, I'm not going to read the whole, the whole story starts at the beginning of chapter 11 and so i'm not going to read all 44 verses i'm going to start in verse 32 and i'm reading out of the common english bible this morning and this is what it says it says this when mary arrived where jesus was and saw him she fell to his feet and said lord if you had been here my brother wouldn't have died when jesus saw her crying and the jews who had come with her crying also, he was deeply disturbed and troubled. He asked her, Where have you laid him? They replied, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to cry. The Jews said, See how much he loved him. But some of them said, He healed the eye of a man born blind. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? Jesus was deeply disturbed again when he came to the tomb it was a cave and a stone covered the entrance. Jesus said, remove the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man said, Lord, the smell will be awful. He had been dead four days. Jesus replied, didn't I tell you that if you believe you will see God's glory? So they removed the stone. Jesus looked up and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. I know you always hear me. And I say this for the benefit of the crowd standing here, that they will believe that you sent me. Having said this, Jesus shouted with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his feet bound and his hands tied and his face covered with a cloth. Jesus said to them, untie him and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come with Mary and saw what Jesus did, believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Read to verse 46. Got all caught up in the story. So you got two extra verses today. Anyway, so here's the thing. Today we are remembering the thanks. And to remember to give thanks for what God has done. And so many times we have those but Lord instances. But Lord, if you were here, and sometimes, you know, we get into this hurry up and wait mentality. We feel like we have to go, 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 get somewhere, and then boom, we're there, and then we have to wait. And then we get upset that we, lay, we, we, we wait. I don't know about you, but, you know, I get to the doctor's appointment 15 minutes early, and then 30 minutes past my time, I get finally seen, and 
what really makes me mad is usually I'm like the first or second appointment. And, uh, but we have this hurry up and wait mentality. And we see in this story that, um, that they are wanting Jesus to come. But Jesus did not come right away. And he had a reason for that. There's a story about a guy who was a bodybuilder. And he was on, and he won on a couple of big rewards. And he was on a TV show and they introduced him out. And here he comes all big and muscly. And, and the crowd is cheering and going wild. And the host of the TV show asks, what do you use all those muscles for? Without answering the bodybuilder began to flex and show those muscles and the whole place got excited again, clapping and doing all sorts of cheering and hooping and hollering over this bodybuilder's muscles. And so um, he asked them again, what do you do with all those muscles? And the bodybuilder just sat there quietly in silence. He had no answer. The man was all power, but his power had no purpose other than to show off and bringing attention to himself. For something to have meaning, it must have purpose. We easily associate the meaning of Lazarus' life with his walk out of the tomb after being dead four days. And how Jesus miraculously worked in Bethany helped show his close associates, God the Father. But Lazarus' life and the events surrounding Lazarus' death and Jesus' miracle in raising Lazarus from the dead had significance far beyond this single moment. See, Jesus wasn't just flexing his muscle in a fancy show. Jesus saw the grieving crowd. He was showing us how to grieve, but also how to live. Today, as we mark All Saints Day, one of those high holy celebrations, we, we commemorate all the saints, those that have gone, away, gone to glory before us this year in our church as we raise up the names during the prayer, and also those that have gone before in years past that sit around the table Worshipping Jesus Christ. And that's the thing. We can't engage in such remembering without acknowledging the feeling of grief. Perhaps profound grief that comes as we recall the friend, the family member, the, family member, the mother, the father, the wife, the husband, the grandfather, the grandmother, the aunt, the uncle, Whoever they may be, as we who are no long as they are no longer here with us, with us, there's that empty place at the table, that hole that they have left in our hearts. And this is the one thing that is important about the story of Lazarus' death. This is one of the few places in the Gospels where there is a deep show of grief from Jesus. We are told from we are told three times in this passage that Jesus was deeply moved or that he wept. In the classic Greek, the words deeply moved is translated is that of a horse snorting. And I don't know if about you if you've heard a horse snort or not, but it is loud. It is uh, frightening if it catches you off guard. And that's what he's saying. It's not that Jesus is just sitting there with tears coming down his eyes and weeping, but he is deeply moved. He is groaning. He is grasping. He's probably maybe wailing. We don't really know, but we just know that it's associated to a horse snort. So it had to be loud. It wasn't just sitting there in silence. It's kind of like when you hear news that catches you by surprise and you gasp uncontrollably, like, oh! you know, and, 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 and I feel like that's what's going on here is that Jesus is deeply moved and he is not just crying but and tears running down his eyes but he is sobbing it's kind of like reminds me of like my daughter when she hurts herself and she cries there's that big cry loud sound and and i feel like that is what's going on it's not just him sitting and, and tears running down his eyes and people just looking but he is deeply moved with emotion 
And with this in mind, we can only assume that Jesus was seized by such deep emotion that he let out that great involuntary groan, like I said, from the depths of his heart. Jesus had lost his friend to death, and death is a difficult thing for those who are left in the wake of death. When my mother passed away nine years ago, I held back my tears because, you know, sometimes when someone's sick for a long time and, and eventually they pass, sometimes uh, we fall into different roles and to cope with what we're feeling. And for me, during the sickness of my mother and going through um, her death and, and preparing her message that I preached, her sermon, I did her funeral. I, uh, you know, I didn't really grieve. I played the comedian. I was the comic role in this whole uh, situation. And then after everything was said and done, and I could not choke back and hold back the tears anymore and put on that smiling face and crack the jokes, and I just broke down and cried. And it was okay because Jesus wept when his friend died, and we too can weep when loved ones die. Yet even as we grieve, we can continue giving meaning and purpose to the lives of those who have gone. We can help them live on by honoring the impact that so many have in our lives. Isn't that what the celebration of this All Saints Day is about? Yes, the lives of those who have inspired us in some special way. Think about it. We all have fingerprints and they're all unique and we all have the ability that there are people in our lives that have impressed their fingerprints on us and changed us for the better or changed us to understand that, hey, I don't want to be like that. And so we have these fingerprints that have been left behind on us and those that have gone before us have shaped us, have molded us, and left fingerprints on us, and we can keep their legacy going, keep their lives going, and keep the character and the principles that they lay down, the foundation for us, going through life by honoring them and living out that way. Um, our thoughts of saints often take us to the disciples of the early church fathers, like Matthew and John and St. Augustine and St. Francis, but yet I firmly believe that there are so many more saints in this world and they're toiling away day after day even when their work goes unnoticed. When I think of a saint, the first thing that comes to mind is someone who devotes their life to following and serving Christ and who inspires others to do the same. That is what a saint is in my mind. You know, if we do that, then God's going to use us to do extraordinary things. And that's all that God asks us to do, as we talked about last week, to love God and to love our neighbor, to love like Jesus. That's what we're called to do. And brothers and sisters, that's what I feel like a saint is. When we think of saints, you know, Mother Teresa pops in my head and and uh, St. Nicholas as Christmas is coming around, and all these other saints. But when I think of a saint, the first thing that comes to mind is someone who devotes their life to following and serving Christ and who inspires others to do the same. And if you are devoting your life to, to um, serving Christ, it doesn't matter if, whether it's big or small. I believe you are a saint and not an eight. How many people have we had in our lives that we can imagine them even now? Like I said earlier, no one can preach your funeral. It's how you lived your life and the fingerprints that you have placed on others. So the question for us now is how will we honor those who are are no longer with us and how will we honor the fingerprints that they put on us and put those fingerprints on others for the better for me the answer to this question is that i'll strive to follow christ more closely each and every day understanding that when i mess up we are forgiven just like um this week friday me and ray lynn my daughter we were having 
we were having some issues. And the only reason why we were having issues is because I was in a bad place. And I got in the car as we were going to school, and I apologized and, and asked for forgiveness and that we can start that afresh and new. And that's what we're called to do. And, and God wants us all to be saints. God wants us all to follow and serve Christ and to inspire others to do the same just as we have been inspired, brothers and sisters. We are ordinary people, but God wants to use us in extraordinary ways. Just ordinary saints, ordinary people that being used by God to do extraordinary things. One of the great mysteries of this story is the fact that Jesus did not come to Bethany before Lazarus died. When Mary and Martha had summoned him, the news was Lazarus was sick. They told him to hurry up. They told him to get there. They told him to come. And by the time Jesus waited and got there, he had passed away. But Jesus' late arrival did not indicate an action on his part. See, a lot of people, we, we, we think about that, that, you know, oh, look at Jesus, he waited. You know, but there, I, I, I really feel like that his late arrival did not indicate an action on his part. The people rolled the stone away from Lazarus' tomb and there was no smell. Before Jesus called Lazarus out, he lifted a prayer to his father, thanking God for hearing him. And when Jesus summoned Lazarus out, he emerged a whole man. When Jesus had received word of Lazarus' illness, his response was, The illness does not lead to death, rather it leads to God's glory. And that's the thing. There's a biblical scholar named Tom Wright, and he says he can only assume that in those days Jesus spent away before returning to Bethany. And this is what he assumes Jesus was doing. He writes, he was praying, praying that Lazarus would die. He would be preserved, praying that through Lazarus' death, he would be preserved from corruption, praying that when eventually they arrived in Bethany, the body and the tomb would be whole and complete, ready to be summoned back into life. And when they took the stone away, he knew that his prayer had been answered. That's the thing. We all want things right now. We all think we want to hurry up, get it here, get it now. But sometimes we need to hurry up and wait. And we need to hurry by hurrying ourselves into prayer and to praying and waiting. And so Jesus thanked the Father for hearing his prayer. The clue to the miraculous raising of Lazarus from the dead was Jesus' steadfast, steadfast faith and fervent prayer. If Jesus needed to spend time in prayer, how much more will we as we seek to follow God? Then there is a lesson from the disciples. There were some of them and, and, uh, they were there and they were asked to go and participate in Christ's work by removing the bandages. In a small town in New Mexico, there was a lady and she was in a hurry one day and she was driving her car and she ran over her pet dog, Brownie. The family was devastated. They buried the dog in the backyard near the field in the corner. But Toby, the, the son, refused to believe that Brownie was gone. And so he did Brownie, and so did Brownie's mother. The hound dog dug up her offspring, and the following day the family found Brownie on the porch, caked in mud and dry blood. He was barely breathing, and they rushed him into the veterinarian. Brownie suffered a broken bone in his shoulder and lost an eye, but he has recovered and the family has given him a new name, Lazarus. Unfortunately, such stories are not very common. And in the gospel story, we, the real Lazarus really was dead. Unlike that determined hound dog, we cannot just go unearth burial sites. And unlike Jesus, we don't have the option of bringing others back to life. Only Christ has the authority to command the dead to come back, to emerge 
with the breath of life once again in their lungs. But once that miracle had been accomplished, Christ turns to his disciples and encouraged them, like I said, to, in, and to join in the blessed work as he instructed them to unbind Lazarus. We are to be workers together with Christ Jesus, and he, invita- he invites us to walk with him, and he also calls us to serve in his name, to continue the work that was begun through him. The great saints of the world are the ones who do the work faithfully. We honor their memory when we seek to do the same. We also draw near to being the saints that God would have us be. So on this All Saints Day, we do all we do well to grieve the loss of loved ones near and dear to us. But it doesn't do us any good to hide our grief or pretend it does not exist. Jesus wept when his friend died. And we too should weep. But even as we say with the mourning crowd at Bethany, come and see leading Jesus to the place of deep grief and sorrow. He also is saying to us, come and see, showing us that even in the depth of sorrow, there is a place of light and love, a place of resurrection and hope that God wants all the world to know about. Our task is to take the message of God's light, love, and hope into the world. When we engage this task, we honor the lives of the saints who have gone before us, and we celebrate all who have inspired us, and we ordinary people come become the saints that God have called us to be. Amen. Amen. And that's the thing. We have all become the saints that God has called us to be when we follow Jesus Christ. And one of the things that Jesus Christ asked us to do is to remember him and to remember that his death and resurrection was not the end, but it was the beginning of something new. It was the beginning that no more sacrifices had to be made for the forgiveness of sins, that we could just go to God, that the curtain was broken down in the temple. And so this morning we come to Holy Communion to realize the fact that we are God's children, that we are saints and not ain't. And we have become saints because of what God is, is merciful, loving, and showing us grace that we saw through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And as Jesus was at the table celebrating the Passover, at the end of the Passover, he took bread that was just ordinary. And he made it extraordinary by saying that this piece of bread represented his body. And with that, he gave thanks to God, and he broke it. Later on, during the meal, Jesus took the cup, and he gave thanks. And he said that the fruit of the vine, the wine in the cup, represented his blood, the blood of a new covenant, for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Would you please pray with me? Lord, we ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. 
at this time the body of Christ given for you. Let us partake together. The fruit of the vine, which represents the blood of Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Let us partake together. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant us that we may go into the world in the strength of your Spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you for joining us. And I want to, first of all, say many thanks for supporting our mission and ministry of the church. The things that we're doing during this time of having um, sermons recorded and placed online and doing church in the parking lot and now back in the building, plus on the telephone, none of that would be possible without your support. Helping our community by supplying uh, gift cards to the local school for the counselors to give to families that are in need to helping uh, the food bank that we support just uh, less than a mile down, the, less than a half a mile actually down the road uh, with food from what you have brought in and also giving them a donation as their food ministry has grown and expanded tremendously over the last uh, couple of years. And now the need is even more that they're building a building just for their food pantry and praise God for that. And all of this stuff that we're doing to help our community uh, would not be so possible without your support. So I want to say thank you for your giving. Um, thank you for trusting us to use uh, the things that you have blessed the church with uh, to reach out to fulfill our mission of being the hands and feet of Christ. And if you would like to continue to support, um, there are different ways you can either mail it in uh, or, or give through online, uh, which is um, located in the description, either above or below. And i uh, got a couple of announcements that I want to uh, give to you. First of all, we are collecting um, items for Thanksgiving for the food bank. We are supplying, a, a, I forget, I think maybe... Uh, 16 turkeys, 12 or 16 turkeys this year. Can't remember the exact number of how many turkeys. It just flew out of my mind, even though turkeys don't fly. But anyway, uh, with turkeys, but we need, uh, we're collecting turkey gravy, collard greens, instant mashed potatoes, and stuffing and canned uh, sweet potatoes or yams to, uh, for the Thanksgiving boxes that the food bank down the road will be handing out. So uh, if you are able, uh, please uh, give the church a call if, and if you can't make it on Sunday morning. And I'll be happy to meet you here to drop those donations off. And the other thing, too, is uh, Christmas is coming and uh, we are in the process of trying to figure out what Christmas is going to look like. And um, so, yeah, so stay tuned as we uh, as you hear updates of some of the fun things that we are uh, going to try to do with Christmas this year. And also, um, Thanksgiving is a time to give thanks and to be uh, safe as we uh, get closer to that. But before we do that, we have uh, Election Day coming up in a couple of days. Uh, get out and vote. Um, you know, please don't let uh, what our governor said about in Delaware here about uh, the masks, that they can't turn anyone away if they're not wearing a mask. Keep yourself safe, use your distancing, wear your own mask, but don't let that deter you from going out and voting and exercising your right to vote. And uh, 
yeah, so with that, I pray that you have a good week. And um, remember that as we move forward in this life, that the best is yet to come. And the only way that the best can come is if we're getting closer to God and being the hands and feet of Jesus and uh, pouring into other people, knowing that we are not perfect, knowing that we are all just sinners saved by grace and we all have our flaws. But thank God we're not where we were and we know we're not where we need to be, but God is still working on us. We are all a work in progress. So hope you have a good week sharing Christ's love with someone in a way that impacts them lives. Take care, God bless, and I hope you can join us next week. Take care.